name is Kevin Nanyango, and I'm the founder of Mutanda Varsity. Uh, the platform is mostly uh, to talk about those characteristics uh, that young people take for granted, but they're what actually open doors. And these are what call, some people call soft skills. And today with me, I am with Anthony Diema. Anthony, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thank you, brother. It's good to be here. Asante sana. And Anthony, it's, uh, I don't know what, so do I call you a journalist or do I call you radio personality? Uh, you can call me a uh, media personality. I think that's a closer <clears throat> media personality, yeah. but I'm also a communication specialist. I see. And you're trained as a journalist, aren't you? Is, is that correct or not? <laughs> It is, uh, my initial training was, um, I'm actually a, a teacher. Um, right, right, okay. Then later on, I went and now, you know, trained as a, as a journalist or rather as a communications person. Of course, yes. I've been uh, in the industry uh, for a, a number of years. So I decided I need to go back to the university. Yes. Uh, train, but uh, I started off as a teacher in media. Well, <clears throat> You talk about teacher, I'll go straight to the point now. So uh, they are saying that lots of people are leaving school and they are unemployable. Like, you know, they kind of, well, you know, there's a, let just get the document. So those are research done by World Bank um, a few weeks ago. And yeah, they were saying that uh, most graduates that are coming out uh, do not have the necessary skills to be employed. Will you agree with that? I, Yes, I, I agree with it um, to a certain extent. Um, and, and the reason why I agreed with it to a certain extent is because uh, a lot of our education system, especially when it comes to, you know, things that are very practical in terms of handling them, we, we don't train our students to the very best of being able to handle what they meet, you know, in the marketplace. So someone leaves the university, they've learned a lot of theory, but when they get there, they realize, wow, it's a totally different ball game. So they have to, you know, start scratching and finding out what did I learn? Uh, do I need to add something else so that I'm able to, to, you know, to get better? I know there's a difference between learning on the job, but you see, when you get to the job, uh, you need to have, uh, you know, some skills that will help you start at a good point. I, I think we still have a long way to go in terms of um, shaping and creating and training uh, students who are um, back to a certain extent to be able to handle what happens in the marketplace. So, 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 think, so <clears throat> where did we go wrong? So is it the school or is it us as individuals? It's both ways. It goes both ways. I think uh, our systems have to get to a point where we really engage fully in terms of uh, the practic practicability of what happens in the, in the marketplace. So that uh, is a failure on our end, but also as individuals, we need to, even when you're in the university or when you're training, you need to go beyond what you learn in class to, you know, just to stretch a bit more, to be able to find out what else can I do? Uh, how can I network better? Who do I know who can, you know, uh, help me out and get more practical skills? So both ways, I, I, I guess. So in your work, and, and uh, so uh, uh, let's put aside your employer, but what you do as a person, you know, you interact with of people, and lots of young people, for sure. Well, I know who you are. Um, and, and, and even you know, most people that are watching us now, you know, they will admire the way you carry yourself, you know, the way you can get to people. So where did you learn that from? Was that because of the family, your background, or the school? Wow. Um, I, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, a conglomeration. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we're here. We want to learn. We want to hear, you know, you know where did you go wrong? So you as an example. Yes. So, so, so there's a part that... Uh, of course, your background uh, develops, right? And you need to so be- that's, So that's in, family now. So it's that's family. family. Uh -huh. but, but you need to be very keen to be able to, to, you know, to attract those things. Because, you know, when you're growing up, your parents will tell you, you need to work hard, you need to learn this, you need to go this direction. Many times we think, mm, 
these parents are just uh, pushing me. We don't take in, you know, those details and lessons very, very keenly. But there is a huge part of that place. I, I guess I will give you my story. Probably to, she will be able to explain please. better. Yeah, that's okay. Please carry on, please. Yes, please carry on. Uh, so here I am. I am in high school. I was not a very good student in sciences. My brother, on the other hand, my, uh, my elder brother, who's an engineer right now, was very good in sciences. And so growing up, I, I used to love arts. I used to love, you know, languages. Uh, but science, maths, physics, chemistry, zero. <laughs> um, I, I, and, and there was a joke when I was in form one, form one, for example, my brother was in form two. He used to get maths 98, 99, wow. uh, 96. I used to get 12, 10, 28, you know. If I get a 30, I've really done very well. Mm. But then, my, my, you know, my parent, my father used to tell me, you, you need to, to be all round. As much as uh, science is not your thing, but you need, to, you need to, because when you go to the university, they will, you know, there's, there are pointers, but you need to be an average student across board. Those are lessons that, you know, my parents kept telling me, you need to work hard. You can't be getting 100 in English and then you're getting, you know, 5% in, in math. There's something amiss. And these are concepts that you need to learn. But when I got to the university, so I, I didn't make it. Uh, so I wanted to be an architect. I didn't, I didn't get the points. I needed to be an architect. So I decided I will do education because um, I had qualified to get to the university, you know, through the government sponsorship. So I get to the university. I, start, I said, I will be the best teacher in the world, you know. So I started learning. I was, I was training as a teacher, of course, doing English and literature. So I did that. I continued doing that. I continued doing that. But then, and this is, I guess, where you pick a lot as a young person beyond what you're learning in school. And I will, I will call it passion. When you have a passion to do something. So in campus, I started desiring you know, media. I, I used to listen to people doing radio and I'm saying one day I'll be there. I want to do this. I, I used to do a bit of drama. So I said, I, I really desire to do this. So the passion kept pushing me, kept pushing me one day after the other, one day after the other, and it kept pushing me. When I got to fourth year, um, I hope I can continue with this story, right? Yes, yes, quite interesting. Yes, carry on, please. So when I got to fourth year, I was I was in the Christian Union. So we organized um, a careers day. So we invited all these professionals. So this, this, is the camp, this is the campus now. Yes, this is in campus. Right, right. Yes, so I am I'm just finishing up, uh, ready to be a teacher in high school, but I have a passion to do media, but I don't know where to start. So we so we organized a careers uh, fair and I uh, invite quite a number of professionals. So during the day, we of course do the plenary session. In the afternoon, we get into, you know, the seminars. And so the people who want to do engineering go to one room, the people who want to do media, you know, many other uh, courses. So there's this room that is meant to be for media people. All right? Yes. So I decided, uh, because I'm always coordinating, I didn't go there, but when I was passing, I saw, oh my goodness, we, the only two people in that room said, I said, you know, to cover the shame of uh, the organizers, let me step into that room. I didn't know I was actually stepping into my destiny. But remember all along, there's been, there had been passion building, passion building. So I get into this room. Uh, there's a gentleman called Mr. Peter Anamini. He says, he, you know, he takes us through what media is all about. Then says, by the way, I'm not here just to, uh, talk to you guys, but I'm here also to scout for talent. Anyone of you who wants to do media, of course, the passion has been building. So that was quite an opportunity for me. So I said, yeah, I want to do media. He told me I'll be, I'll be traveling to South Africa, but I'll be back in, in about um, uh, so, uh, a month. So let's talk. I couldn't wait for a month. The following day, I was, the passion was driving me. I called him, Peter Peter Namini, we met yesterday. You know, you said you're scouting for guys. Uh, he told me, Anthony, we, uh, yes, we spoke. I told you, let's, let's talk after a month. Okay, I said, it's okay, sir. Day number two, I couldn't. I mean, it was burning. I said, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Who will employ me? 
and I don't have a degree in, you know, in media or communications or journalism. I called him day two, asked him, oh, good, good, after, good morning, Peter and Amini. My name is Anthony Ndemo. We met two days ago. I, so he told me we spoke yesterday, Ibana. What's wrong? You called me after a month. I'm traveling to South. <laughs> day three. <laughs> Passion, eh? Around the same time, I wanted to call, but I said, let me not call. By the time it was getting to the afternoon, I couldn't. I just couldn't. I picked the phone, called him, and told him, um, I am sorry, sir but I really desire this thing. That's why I'm calling you. He said, okay, looks like you really want it. You go to Mombasa, you'll find a lady called Sheila. She runs a, a, a radio station called Barack FM. I'll put in a good word. You go there, uh, talk to her, tell her what you want. Breakthrough number one, because of passion. And uh, you just go back. So when you talk about passion, it's not just about using the word passion, you know, there are some things that you're doing that could show that you've got passion uh, with radio, isn't it? That's true. And, and uh, so my question is, so how, uh, how do young people try and develop and even show that passion? Take you as an example. So what you say that you know, could show that you had that passion? What were you doing uh, to cultivate uh, that kind of passion? All right. The, the number one thing is to really get to learn the art or the thing you desire to be. And for me, I used to listen to radio a lot. I used to li listen to a particular radio station. I used to love it. I used to love that presenter. So every morning I would, you know, pass in the room and keep, you know, presenting like I was in a studio. So I am interacting with it. I am it's pushing me to want to practice and to to be there, you know. So that's that's I think one of the things that passion makes you do. I hope that's clear, Kevin. Right? Oh yes, 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 yes. So number two, uh, what passion makes you do is to go beyond your comfort zone. You cannot just stay where you are and say it will come to me. It cannot come to you. You have to go out and knock the door. And that's exactly what I was doing. Um, uh, just asking Mr. Peter and Amini, I, I really desire this thing. Can I kindly give me an opportunity? So networking also, you know, goes around the same. You need to see the people who are doing it. You might not be at, 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 a, at a place where you're able to reach them, but you could be knowing someone who's able to reach them or someone who's done this, even in a small scale. And reach out to them, tell them, I want to do this. So network, network, network. And when you get opportunities, um, for example, what I, I also teach a bit in the university nowadays, I encourage my students, I tell them, you know what? Don't be here in the university and, and waiting for, for you to finish before you go out there. Reach out when you're doing your, during your holiday, look for an opportunity to go to a TV channel, a radio station, just to see what happens. Uh, you know, uh, we can just to see what happens. That's, that's passion that drives you to see what is happening in the marketplace. And but, in the process, you get carry to carry All right? Carry carry on. I'll just get to ask this, uh, uh, Anthony, if I may. So people will tell you that, uh, well, there's an evidence that you know, someone goes to university, you know, they do very well. You know, you know, they graduate and they start knocking these doors, but these are not opening. Like, you know, reaching people like you is very difficult. <laughs> well, you know, I want to experience myself to try to become this show. You know, so uh, if you're not talking about passion, but uh, the system or the environment itself uh, perhaps does not encourage uh, that kind of a role. For example, you know, you have a call of passion being a radio presenter, taking it as an example. But when I look at, at the local radio stations, when I knock at the door, they don't open up for me. You know, so then where, what next? Yeah, and, and the challenge we have, Kevin, is that sometimes we want to knock at the, at the top. Sometimes we forget that there is a door very close to you that you can Anthony, You're very on. good. <laughs> I like that. You're very, very good. I like that. Please carry on. Yeah, so, so, so I want to knock, uh, let's say I admire the, a presenter on CNN or Al Jazeera. I can't get there, you know, but there's a local channel, even probably within the university that can, you know, give me a platform where I can start. We, we shy of starting at a very low level. And that's, that's what's ailing our young people. 
So start where you are. And sometimes where you are is closer than you think. It could actually be closer to where your, you know, your phone is. And, and, and you see the internet has opened opportunities and channels. And uh, that's an opportunity to start practicing some of those things as you keep going. But what I, what I believe very strongly, Kevin, is that um, you need to start where you are. Don't, uh, so when you knock the door, go to the local channel in your village. There's an opportunity right there that, and you see for them, uh, they don't have too much to lose. So they'll say, okay, you want an uh, internship here or you want to see what happens here. This is a small place, just see. But the moment you go up there, they will ask you a question. So what have you done? Which doors have you knocked? Where have you been? That starting point is a beautiful place where you can see. This is where Antony, I'm starting. Antony, Antony, you hear these stories where, uh, you know, someone has knocked all the doors. Uh, uh, you know, you talk about the local level, let's say in the village, you know, you, uh, there are those, like right now, there are lots of those mushrooming um, uh, cut radios are coming up. And mm -hmm. you still find people running this, sh uh, this kind of show that people like you, like you, people already establish themselves, you know, people have got, 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 got names. So it's difficult even for this young person, you know, to even just spend a day at the local station. And again, I'm going to push you here, Anthony, and let's be very, very practical here. It's still difficult, and 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 there are lots and lots of people, you know, keep knocking at the doors at that local level, but it's not opening up, Anton. You know what, Kevin? Um, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. Uh, it is not uh, impossible. Uh, you you can't you can't stop knocking because you were sent away two three times. I am a strong believer that you need to keep knocking until that door is open. Practically, I know what you're saying. Sometimes it becomes very hard. They push you away. They keep pushing you away. Um, and sometimes you get discouraged. You don't think there's an opportunity right there. But you need to keep knocking. Don't stop. Just keep knocking. If this door does not open, go to another door. Keep knocking. I, I can assure you, when you knock 10 times, there will be a door that will open. Because you see, you, the flip side is, giving up and saying, you know what, this door is not opening, the other one is not opening. So I guess um, probably this is not a career I, I need to pursue. Let me try something else. So keep knocking. I, I, I know people who have knocked even, I run a small production house, people who've knocked two, three times, I told them right now there's no opportunity, check again. And because of their persistence, I said, you know what, come, let's see what we can do. So even those people you knock their doors, sometimes they get tired of your persistence. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, let's see, you, you're too persistent, you know? Well, Alton, goodness me. You know, you're saying things here that um, they sound simple, but they actually make things happen. Uh, now, for those who are just joining us, um, my name is Kevin Nyango, and I am with Anthony. Uh, today, we are talking um, about some of the soft skills that um, open doors for young people. This is not University School of Soft Skills. Now, Anthony, you mentioned about the internet. And one thing, actually, you know, I've never met you as a person, in person, but here we are talking. So the internet does work, you know, so and that's a very good example. But let's, let's go back again uh, to the knocking at the door. So you're seeing the young people mostly, they like knocking at the top. So they want to go straight to the CEO and they, they pass the secretary or even, uh, let's say, they are sky of security, you know. Right. So how, is there something that education system can do? To make young people understand that there is a system, things mm. don't just work like that. You know, is this something that you, well, you you used to be a teacher yourself? You know, the the classroom environment that it is. Do you think that education system needs to kind of look at itself and instead of just training people to pass exams, but train people to trust the process? Oh, that's that's very key. Trusting the process is. Um... It's very important, especially in our generation today. Um, I, I usually like giving an example of, so today you finish schooling and you've uh, just gotten your first job, right? There is no way uh, that you will get your first job. You're earning 30,000, for example, Kenyan shillings. And um, you're staying, you, st you know, the following month you're staying in a house, in a mansionette, uh, and it's fully furnished. It is not possible and unless you have been doing funny things. 
But the process teaches you that yes, you will buy a couch, or probably a couch will come later, you'll buy a mattress, you will buy a stove, you'll buy a pan, you'll buy some spoons, you'll buy a couch, later on you'll buy a TV. After a full year, you, you're in a, in a one-roomed house, but that, that one-roomed house is fully furnished. In four years, you're in a two-bedroomed house that is fully furnished. In five years, you're in a, in a mansion and it's, it's looking good. In 10 years, probably you're paying mortgage for that you know, mansion that you're in. In another 20 years, you're building your own house or you've already paid for that house. And that is the, the reality of life. You do not wake up today and you're living in a house. It's, I mean, it happens to very few people and, and it's, it's, <laughs> there are circumstances behind that. So, so everyone needs to appreciate that life is a process. If I want to be a news anchor, I will not wake up uh, from campus and I go to you know, this top channel and I say uh, to the editor, I want to be the news anchor. It doesn't work and it will not work. So you have to start and say, you know what? I, am, I kindly desire to have internship. And sometimes you start with the people who are your friends who are closer. Can I get an internship in that institution? You know, and they, and, they, and when you get an opportunity for internship, that's when you need to maximize the internship. You, you know, you deliver on the internship and sometimes you're told uh, we need to extend the internship. So your internship is extended by another three months. You say you need to hold in, hang in there, give your very best, do more hours. The, the reality about life, which is unfortunate, is that when you're young in your career, when you're starting up, you will be overworked and underpaid. It's very unfortunate, but it's the truth, all right? So do, do another term of internship. If they're giving you another third term, do it. By the time you've done four, four terms of internship, they can trust you with something. They can tell you, you know what? Go out there and report. And you'll report probably for another one year. After you report, they'll tell you, now you start looking for opportunities. When someone goes on leave and they will say, can I try and anchor? Let me just try, you know, a morning show. And that's how opportunities come. Rarely would you leave campus and uh, be a news anchor. So that is what I want to encourage our young people, man. I'm also young. Um, you <laughs> have to do the process. There are no two ways about it. Actually, um, uh... I mean, I can guess all you are. I mean, you look pretty young to me. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm not, really? I, no, 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 I, 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 I can guess all you are. But what I'm trying to say, so, uh, uh, yeah, you look very young, mate, come on. But if you look at what you see on TV, and what we hear, we don't see people like you. You know, uh, most of our channels are, are full, um, like, look at the headline today, to be politicians, you know, take most of the things. Well, they, they take the headline. And these are people that, you know, drive amazing cars. You know, once someone goes to politics, the following year, they've got a mansion. It are we sending? Are we showing the wrong picture to people, or to young people particularly? We, I, I can assure you, we we are life in its reality does not go that direction. Um, it's a process. So our politicians have taught us that uh, you can wake up, get votes. And uh, in, your in your first two weeks, you have a house, you're driving a, a gas lamp, <laughs> and you're good to go. <laughs> but what percentage of people do that, you know? And, and there's also another crop of um, people who are, who, are, who are young, and uh, they're using unscrupulous means to get money. I, it's true there are those who've been able to make it within that very short time. But the reality, a bigger percentage of people, you will have to pursue the process. And the beauty about following the process, when you eventually have cracked it or you've made it, you really appreciate what the process means. And one day when you're, you're, you're encouraging people and raising people, you will understand what it means to pursue the process. And you will encourage them and help them, you know, climb the ladder uh, quick. So. I, I know, and, and, and Kevin, you've traveled. This story is same everywhere. It, it's not different. It's not just in Kenya, in the US, 
you know, in Australia, the process is a beautiful thing. And, and the sooner you appreciate the process, the better for your growth as you keep but growing. It. But is it overrated? Because if all the time we tell young people, you trust the process, trust the process, till when? So is it like, <laughs> an excuse? Like people are like, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, I'm using you as an example uh, because of what you've achieved, you know? And you know, because when well, you share your story, many people know who you are. You know, if people Google your name, they will know, you know, what, they will know your process, okay? Which is good, but is it an excuse that people who got keys use so that, you know, they can actually just look you out? They just say, you know what, you know, okay, I spoke to you yesterday, can we just wait first? Just wait, just wait, just wait. So is it an, is it an excuse that um, influencers use? Uh, clearly, some people have taken advantage. And um, when you're saying it's overrated, if you're in the process, it looks like it's overrated. And there are people who've taken advantage. Unfortunately, um, that is true. Unfortunately, that is true. Um, but again, you see, you have to find ways of uh, managing what you have and the processes that have been set in a, if, if I am able to beat a particular process, I will do it. If I'm not able to beat a particular uh, system and process, I, I'm not saying I will succumb, but I will do my best so that one day when I'm in a better place, I will be able to, you know, to help the others who are down there because I know what it took for me to, to get there. Kevin, I have been in the media for 15 years now. Um, it, uh, it looks like a very short time. There are things I have had to really labor. Um, there are things that I've had to work so hard. But I appreciate where I've gotten to, and I believe I'm just beginning. Um, I don't regret that I took time in my initial years to build myself and pursue the process because that has shaped something better in me than when I was 24 and doing what I'm doing right now. You know, there, there are things that, that, that are very critical in life. And those are things that I learned during that time. Um, I learned to work very hard. So today when I'm running my own unit, I know what working hard means. Because if I just got in there, got what I wanted, probably I would have used it differently, not appreciated, you know, what I had then. So yes, you're saying it's overrated, but imagine it is very, very important to pursue that process. It shapes something beautiful in you. Let's talk about networking, Anton. And, um, you know, I, I know that also time may not go on our side. <clears throat> so... He is, a, he is a graduate now. Well, let's say someone is just about to finish university, okay? And, and you know, they don't communication. So um, what, will, what, what, what do you tell them? What's, how do we network? How do we make sure that you've got a network that is working really? You know, so rather than just talking about, uh, okay, you have good grades, you know, start getting involved in the university, whatever it is. But in, in reality now, what does this, what's this network we talk about? All right. I, um, I, will, I will speak as a teacher as well, because I teach, all right? So, so this, is, this is what I, I encourage my students. I tell them networking means you have connected to someone who is in, who is in your industry. And many times when people hear that, they say, I need to know the head of programming for this channel you might never get an opportunity to know them at that particular point. But in your circles, I am very sure in your circles, you know someone who knows someone who is in media, for example. Well, I, I that, that's a very good, and that's what I picture now, because I know someone who knew you, and here we are. So that's, that's actually, that's true. And I totally agree with that. And great you mentioned that. Please carry on. Thanks, Joyce, yes. for being here. Oh, great. So, so I know uh, an uncle of mine who knows someone who works in the media. So my uncle is my direct contact, all right? Or a friend who knows a friend 
who's there. So that's the first point of contact, all right? So I need to reach out to this first point of contact and, you know, explain to them, tell them what it means, what, I, what this means to me, um, you, with the only hope that they will be able to connect you to someone, all right? And that person, of course, can connect you to the other person. That's networking. It doesn't have to be, you know, top. The other face of it, and uh, when you get an opportunity now to meet someone who is directly involved, now that's where other soft skills come in. There are people who put you off. For example, someone will come to me and say, you know, I am, I'm from the university. I've done a course in media and communication. I want to be an anchor. So I need you to open a door for me, clearly. <laughs> That already is a, is a put off, yeah? So very soft skills of learning, how do I come to this person from the point of, I, I desire to learn. I desire to see what's happening. If it's someone probably who's an editor in that organization, tell them, sir, you know what? I just desire to know how to edit. I want to know how you do this thing. I, I, and sometimes it's not you taking me there. They will see there's wisdom in this young man or this young, the young lady. So when they start to work with you, they will tell you this is how you do it. Uh, day two, they want to take you to a machine and probably the machine is not even in the station. Yeah, they show you. Day three, they say, ah, come to the station. Uh, you can see how things happen. And that's how you put you in your leg, step after, you know, um, another. The other phase of networking, of course, is to look out for opportunities where people get to gather and they do their thing. And this will be, you know, media people who just have opportunities or organizations that, um, you know, create opportunities where people meet to learn. All right. And uh, sometimes these are practitioners who are meeting and you need to, you need to go into the into the uh, internet and find out and also ask someone else, where do these people meet? Right in there. It's even a more direct opportunity because you'll find one person who knows, um, who runs, probably they are the editor and just engage them. Again, use the soft skills of, you know, use wisdom to tell them that you want to learn. So there are different faces um, and none of them is unreachable. At least I know someone knows someone who knows someone who knows someone that knows someone that works there. <laughs> and and um, I, just, I actually agree with that. Uh, but again, I'm going to ask you, Anthony, uh, that, so what's the difference between networking and I want to use uh, the word nepotism. Uh, I'm trying to avoid that. Because, you know, so I want to relate to that with knocking on the door. So if my uncle... Uh, let's say it's a minister in charge of it's a, it's a minister of communication, for instance, you know, and I go straight to him. He can make things work for me easily, and lots of people. That's and lots of people, especially fresh graduates, you know, that's the kind of network they want to get involved in. People that make things work easy. Uh, so I suppose what I'm trying to put to you is, <laughs> I know what, what I mean. So should we just be aiming at? trying to be connected with those people that I can answer, you know, those are to make things work, but forget about me, but you are the guys that have the, have the keys. Is that what you mean by network? Um, it's, it's a, if, if my uncle, for example, uh, is a minister of communications and my uncle has a key for me, do you know now, I, you see now, I can't say, <laughs> and this might be very controversial, I can't say I will not go to my uncle because he's my uncle. I will actually go to my uncle to learn. I, and, and, I'm, I, and I'm very serious about this. I will not go to my uncle for, for my uncle to, to open, to give me a job. Because if my uncle gives me a job today, chances are very high that uh, I will not appreciate that job as much as someone else who's you know, climbed the ladder to where, to where they are. But my uncle at that particular point has a key for me. And if my uncle tells me, Anthony, uh, well done, you've uh, cleared campus. I will send you to someone who will uh, probably help you train in this and the other. 
I don't think there's a problem with that. In fact, it's not corrupt. It's not nepotism. Because my uncle has just told me, follow the process. When you get a job here eventually, well done. But you see, um, how many people have the privilege to, to get to that uncle? You know, it's a very small percentage of people who have that privilege. So if you don't have that privilege, and that's why I'm saying, you have to be willing to start from where you are. It sounds easy. It sounds easier said than, than you know, than, than done. It's, it's, it sounds very easy, Kevin, that um, I can reach out to one, two, three people before getting to the final person. But it has to start there. That's the person you know. You have to knock that door and allow the process to flow from, from right there. Again, I ask, the flip side of this is uh, you sitting there and, and sending a lot of letters to media houses. Unfortunately, they will be, mm -hmm. you know, uh, thrown in the dustbin and you will be there many years down the line frustrated. So start from somewhere, start from somewhere. Well, so it's it's not it's not, as you, to use your words, it's not impossible. It can happen, isn't it? It can happen. There's, uh, can I say something? Please, carry, a, please, carry on. There's a Swahili. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a saying that I love. It's it it goes, Hakuna mkate mgumu mbele a chai. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how hard that piece of bread is, but the moment it drops into, you know, a cup of tea. Yes, it comes up. Yes, so there's yes. nothing that is impossible. It is possible. It might take longer, but yes, it's possible. This is a teacher speaking to you. And now uh, he's a media practitioner and uh, working with some people. So it's possible. <clears throat> well, you see, I, I can listen to you the whole day. Uh, uh, and, uh, what frustrates me is that what you're saying, what you're telling me right now, is what we should we should have we should be told maybe ten years ago. But it's not happening in school, and also getting people like you is very difficult. You know, uh, let's be realistic here. You know, <laughs> no, no, see, oh, no, see, seriously. Well, uh, it, it took me months to get you. <laughs> you know, no, no, seriously. It, yes, it if it wasn't if it wasn't Joy Kivata, the, and yeah. Joy, thanks so much if you are listening to this. <laughs> when, I, when I mentioned your name to, to, to Joy Kivata, Joy said, Anthony, I know Anthony very well. And actually, you know, I think she found you after 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 after, after spoken to her. And yes. that's, that's the reality now. Uh, getting people that, uh, okay, okay, I'll rephrase uh, what I want to say. So getting people like you, it is difficult. You know, we talk about mentorship and, and, and you know, advisors, but where are these people? You know, you know, like, was there someone like you? How do you even get you, Anthony? You know, go to telling me it's quite, you know, it's, it's, I like my daughter to know now, you know, but where do we get people like you? Where young people, keep, they're being told, trust the process, you know, be patient, but who is telling them this? Where do they get this information from? Right. I, I, I hear you, I hear you, Kevin. And uh, I think that's the biggest frustration among us young people because, <clears throat> You see, networking, if you're able to network with people who are directly involved, you see, in the industry you're in, it makes more meaning. And um, you see, if you have someone who can <clears throat> work with you, uh, it's even more meaningful. <coughs> Excuse me. It's more meaningful. So where are these people? Where are these people? Um, <laughs> Where are you yourself? You know, <laughs> how do you get, people listen to us right now. How do they get hold of Anthony? Not to yes. talk, but uh, for Anthony to tell them, because you know, sometimes they say that uh, sometimes it's good to hear for the host's mouth. You know, <coughs> you've gone right. through the process. You know, you are where they are right now. You've gone through that process. You see the process. It does work. Okay. Right. But uh, nobody tells them is in, uh, at school. All they're being told is you've got to pass exams. You know, you've got to really hard to pass exams. They're not being told about the process and the networking um you know that's not happening and that's what should be, that's what should be happening but nobody's saying that that's true uh, let me speak for myself uh kevin please um yes. let me speak What's for that? myself <laughs> you should apologize to my colleagues <laughs> we don't get you this guy uh, 
<laughs> and I mean, it's 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 in every other industry. The people you desire to meet to connect you to something, sometimes they're either too busy, unavailable. I strongly believe it's um, it's a very personal issue. For some, it's a character issue. Uh, some people think, excuse me, you have no idea what it took for me to be here. So leave me alone, all right? For some people, it's a, it took me a, a lot of suffering to be here. So I need to walk with someone and hold someone's hand. <clears throat> like I told you, and I like being very practical. Of course, if today a young man comes to me or a young lady comes to me and tells me, Anthony, I really desire to learn this. <clears throat> I really want to to be there. I want to be an anchor. I want to be this. Of course, I'll take them through the process. But this is what I do. Even for me, I, I can assure you, if I have someone who wants to be an anchor, you know, the only thing I can do, I can tell them, you know what, please go do a demo and I can help you do a demo. And the best I can do is to take this demo. If I find that there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, quality in it, and take it to the person I know at a station, probably the head of program, and tell, have a look at this. I think this person has great talent. When an opportunity arises, kindly consider them. That is the far I can go. But this is what I've done, and this is um, one of the simple ways that I've decided to do, to, you know, to give back. Like I said, I run a small production house. So if I see someone who, Connect, is connecting to me and they desire, <coughs> they have a lot of passion to do what I am, I am in. I'll tell them, you know what? You will come. <coughs> We're doing a production this entire week. I'll invite you to come for two days. I will not give you <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. I will not give you bus <coughs> I will not give you a stipend, <clears throat> but I want to check something. You come and see what happens. So I'll watch them day one, <clears throat> day two. I'll tell them next week, come for two other days. I'll watch them day two, day three, day four. And I will see, and <clears throat> clearly if there's a passion in this person to learn and to want to grow. By the time you're doing a week, you will see there's something they have picked. And, and, and if the production, for example, is, is, is going on, continuing, um, uh, you see the next phase, you give them a role, a very simple role. And when you give them that role, you, you of course, um, give them something, uh, some money, just to, com just to tell them, thank you, <clears throat> day three, day four. And I've been able to work with a few of those. Um, and you will see passion, you will see commitment, in a very short time, all right? So <laughs> let me say this, um, I am available. You need to reach out, but you have to have a level of commitment. I will ask you to come in one of our production and see what happens. And if you're bright enough, <clears throat> if you're committed enough, you'll pick something. And you'll see someone saying, you know, let me carry this, let me, let me do this, let me try this, let me try this. And that, those are the people who eventually, small, bit by bit, uh, day three, day four, you get bus fare, you get a proper stipend, day five, you get a job, and you keep growing <clears throat> and getting better. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm really pleased you, 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 you've, you've said that, Anthony. Um, I, again, you look, I, I'm in an industry where I work with lots of young people as well, and people always want to get the top immediately. Uh, I like what you've said about um, uh, one, look at the doors, not just from the top, but from where you are, you know. Number two, uh, you, you mentioned about just the process, being patient, building yourself, adding value. And number three, which I really appreciate, and I think it's very important, is networking. You know, uh, we, we like, you know, we like quick fix, isn't it? Especially young people, really. You know, they kind of equate the amount of money they have spent, you know, throughout the time, like, you know, primary school, uh, university, and they feel entitled. Like, you know, because I've spent all this money, or mm. this sort of done, I need to have this job. It doesn't work like that. Um, my last question to you, Anton, um, is where should, so I, yesterday when I mentioned somebody that I was coming to talk to you, 
uh, this person, which I think you, you might know her, uh, she said that most parents will spend a lot of money you know, to take their kids uh, to nice schools, you know? And rarely will a parent pay money for somebody to go for a good camp, or for example, like here in Europe, you know, uh, during, um, uh, during holidays, there are lots of, you know, uh, people travel a lot. Like you hear like, you know, a group of schools, you know, going to France, whatever, just to go and experience a life in different areas. But when you come to, uh, to a local area, for example, in Kenya now, you know, rarely will parents do that. So my question to you is, is the community also failing young people then? So <clears> they keep telling us school, it's school, it's school. But we're talking about uh, the character, you know, where you and I, I as, as I say, I think I know how old you are. And during our time, I think I'd be right actually, if you ask me. So during our time, we spent lots of time with your parents, your grandparents, you know, we used to hear stories, you know, like in Abu Nuasi, you know, those, we used to <laughs> learn from them. But nowadays, we don't do that. There's not that kind of um, opportunity anymore for young people, you know. We have become, we are urbanized, everything is in town, you know. We don't like uh, going to rural areas. So are we saying that the community is failing young people <coughs> in terms of molding, uh, in terms of molding them to be holistic persons? Um, that's true. And, and I'll not just talk about the community, I'll talk about parents. Um, I have four kids, uh, Kevin. <laughs> Congratulations, Anthony. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if a parent does not take the initial step to be able to develop their child holistically, then it means the community is failing because the community is made of parents, right? <clears throat> it's made up of... Um, individuals who are guardians and parents. And if, a, if, if um, an individual is not molded holistically, it doesn't matter which school you go. <clears throat> you will go to a good school, you will get good education. You will even get into an amazing career because of <clears throat> what you've been able to achieve academically. But when you get there, you have no skills of interacting with people, you have no empathy, you have no, um, you don't, you don't interact with people like a human being. And that's why in organizations, you find bosses who are slave drivers and people are crying every day because these people just, you know, they they think about productivity beyond the human being. And so they think you have to work, you have to do this, you have to do that. And at the end of the day, um, the organization does not get what it needs to get. It might get to its targets, but it's losing people because people are getting depressed, stressed out, and they are becoming, you know, they are pushing that to other people because hurt people hurt others as well. So someone leaves work because they are working with a slave driver, they go hurt their wives, hurt their children, and they, I don't know the cycle continues. Yes, so yes. The community has, has failed, but um, we need to start changing that narrative. I need to teach my children to interact with everyone and to be, to be good people to every person in every social, you know, uh, kada, whether you're low income Anna, high income Anna, yeah, yeah. you need to know that these are human beings and human beings are human beings. I, I like that one. And uh, as I say, you know, we can, we can spend the whole, whole evening talking about um, passion or how to build it. Um, I suppose, yeah, the last question is, so at what time should young people say this process is not working, let me try again something else? Is there something like that? I, I, I believe... Um... Wisdom also pushes us to get to a point where life throws to us many things and sometimes it doesn't go away. So if it gets to a point and um, someone feels, we, and we know, I know friends of mine who <clears throat> wanted to be engineers. I know a specific friend of mine who wanted to be an engineer, 
they went ahead and, and they did what they could. They even got their certificate, but they got in their things were so hard. At that point, they discovered probably I was meant for something else. And uh, they changed their career. And today, it's been, I think, seven years. They are happy, fulfilled people. So when it gets to a point and you think this cannot work, not because... Uh, you did not work smart, you did not push too hard, you did not have passion enough, but because it is not wired within you, it's not purpose within you. Yes, it is never too late to turn around and say, let me, let me begin afresh. It's, it becomes very hard, but once you are on track, the rest of your life becomes a good place to be in. So the process also can teach us, isn't it? So sometimes the process can, that's uh, when through those challenges, you know, you learn that actually this wasn't meant for me. Well, I told you, Anthony, I wanted to be a priest myself and I'm not a priest anymore, you know, as I'm doing other things. So the, the, the process again makes, made me know, actually, you know, you cannot be a priest. No, you like, you look the other way around. <laughs> so I, I totally relate with what you're saying. But listen, Anthony, I, is, um, I cannot thank you enough, um, you know, uh, for being here. It's, uh, uh, I am a nobody, I've got no name. So most of the times when I invite people, the first thing they look at your profile, oh, no, <laughs> I don't go there. Kevin doesn't have a follower. So you being here, I do not take that for granted. And, and uh, you know, I'm glad I get that I'm part of your network now. And uh, I, I've got a feeling that uh, we can do lots of things together. Um, obviously, I will take advantage of you because of your name and what you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, for those that listen to us, uh, this is um, Tandao Vazuti. My name is Kevin Anyango, and today I was talking to Anthony. Is it Ndiema or Dilemma? I kind of don't get it right. It's Ndiema. Ndiema, Ndiema. Ndiema. Uh, right, yeah, well, you had for me. And uh, this was made possible uh, by Joy Kivata. So I've got to thank Joy, <laughs> Joy for making this. Um, so, Anthony, uh, I'm going to say thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. You're doing an amazing job. Keep at it um, as you, you know, take the conversations right here. Thank you very much, Kevin. Oh, absolutely. You're very kind. Thank you. And have a good evening. All right. Good evening.